If it's haram, you want to change your ways, ask yourself, are you ready for marriage? If not, cut it, drop it, don't use and abuse. A lot of people say, I want to marry you, but you know what, three years, three years. That's another problem we face. Parents have agreed, but they say the marriage will only happen in three years. These children are literally spending their life like husband and wife already. And you're just saying nikah will happen. I'm worried about people. Worried about people? Subhanallah. It's the second time I said it. How can you worry about people when you don't even know how long you're going to live? You set the trend, people will follow. Wallahi, there was an example of a very rich person in one of the countries and he's a friend of mine. And I told him, he said, I want to throw a party for my daughter. She's the only daughter getting married and I want to invite so many. I said, listen, brother, if you keep it simple and set a trend, a lot of people will follow. Wallahi, he kept it simple and straightforward and he did everything as per the islamic you know rulings and i swear so many people followed and i said there you are brother you get the reward of everyone they looked at the joneses and followed saw that the joneses themselves were so down to earth who are we the problem is every wedding has become a competition you know those who are not even the bride they fuss about the clothing they're going to wear at someone else's wedding whom they don't even get along with sometimes just because they and they have a new set of clothing sewn and shoes and handbags accessories and whatnot and hijabs for someone else's wedding whereas for your own wedding you're supposed to be even simpler than that may Allah forgive us and this is why we say keep it simple it's not supposed to be a competition and I was told by one of the brothers well you know what we like all the sisters to dress up nicely because we go to weddings in order to find one for ourselves well, that's not the platform. You know, I remember uh, in one of the cultures, you know, culturally, there are some people who think, well, you go to the wedding to scout. You go and scout. Well, if the boys are scouting the girls, that's not a religious function. Right? However, if your sister comes across someone, your brother comes across a, a decent brother and so on, and they bring the issue up, remember you have sisters to get married. If I see a sister who's old and she's not married, I blame the males who are nearest to her, starting from her father. You were supposed to have kept an eye out. You were supposed to have spoken. Don't be shy. Speak. Say, look, brother. You know, it's happened to me as well, where I've had young people come to me and say, you know, so and so, so and so, so and so, I have this, this, this. What do you think of marriage? And subhanAllah, I will answer in my own way with respect. But I really admire your courage. I really admire your courage. Wallahi. And I believe that that's the right thing because who knows you will ask five or ten people and one of them who's the right one chosen by Allah will probably say hey mashallah let's take it a step further and you might end up getting married but you've done nothing people say oh you want to get married make dua make dua is it like a pot that you keep on making something no way make dua yes we will do the dua but with that we have to act so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us these haram relations to make them halal you need to make sure that you get the nikah done. Simple as that. Even if you cannot afford to live with each other now, I encourage your parents, I encourage all parents out there to look into the following scenario. And that is, if your children cannot afford to live with each other in the same home for now, let the nikah happen and let them live separately. No one said that they have to live together right now. But if the nikah has taken place, and then what will happen at least the relationship is halal so you are invoking the mercy of Allah the mercy of Allah descends on you this is how you will achieve if there's no mercy what are you going to achieve subhanallah so you cannot continue to just say this guy can't afford a home and therefore when he has a job worth 130,000 pounds a year when he's got a, a car and a house then we will allow the nikah Trust me, they've already, they're already living, like I said, husband and wife, committing every sin there is in the book. And you know what? You're just waiting for 10 years to pass. By that time, they could have had children who were already in the school. Subhanallah. Can I tell you what? A lot of the old people are very guilty of wanting the, their sons-in-law to be wealthy people when they married their own wives, who are the mothers of these same daughters. They didn't even have a pair of shoes. Do you know that? So don't make it a criteria. You need a home. You need a house. He just needs to be responsible. If he's responsible, he will take care of your daughter like he's taking care of everyone else. Subhanallah. He doesn't need to be a millionaire. Wallahi, if that was the case, the hadith would have said, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ عِنْدَهُ مَالْ فَزَوِّجُوهُ If someone came to you, they have a lot of wealth, get them married. Never has that been a criteria. Subhanallah. 
Remember this, responsible individual. Yes, they may have to downgrade their lives. Some might be fortunate to upgrade a little bit. That can be taken away immediately. I know of so many people who were wealthy when they got married and they lost absolutely everything a little bit later down the line. And I know the opposite. People who were poor, they got married. Allah says in the Quran that if you marry and you are not able, meaning you're not so wealthy, if you do that in order to protect your chastity, Allah will grant you sustenance. He will make you wealthy. Listen in Surah An-Nur, Allah says, <laughs> Speaking about marriage, if the two are poor, their intention was to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will grant them that financial independence. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So please, my brothers and sisters, if you're not interested in the nikah, don't use and abuse someone's child. Never. Don't play a game to say, we'll get married in five years. And in the, within that time, the girl is waiting for you or the boy is waiting, for example, and two years later, you just say, not interested. You've broken their, not only their heart, you've destroyed a life. That's what you've done. The person could have actually gone and married someone else. However, the last thing I'm going to say here is that if you have committed sin in the past, you've done haram and so on, please, if, the, if Allah has made it such that the two of you are now getting married, seek Allah's forgiveness for whatever you've done in the past. Start a new leaf. People have committed adultery, whatever they've done, they're now getting married. They're now getting married. Seek Allah's forgiveness. Have your function in a proper way that will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what's the point of having a haram function when Allah's facilitated halal relationship? What's the point? Just have a simple function, beautiful for the sake of Allah. Trust me, what you need most is contentment. You know, all the haram that happened in the function is not going to come to your aid. It will actually result in your detriment. To be honest, those who have had functions where haram has taken place, seek Allah's forgiveness. You will turn a new leaf and proceed. Because that function is a seed that you're sowing for the tree that's about to grow in your life. If it's a bad seed, do you expect a good fruit to come out of it? Well, if you engage in tawbah, still Allah's mercy will grant you good fruit. So please, let's mend our ways. Let's come out. Allah's made it so easy. Don't use the cheap excuses. I have spoken to so many parents I don't even know because of emails that have come in my direction. And I've offered or volunteered to be a middleman to say, I'll speak to your parents. Some of them have sworn me. Some of them have told me, would you give your own child? And I said, yes, I would. Are you sure? They were quiet. Are you sure? I said, yes, I would. And mashallah, a lot of them have actually given their daughters and their sons. Subhanallah, they've blessed the marriages. Jazakumullah khair.